Today, I'm gonna teach, ooh, teach you how to make a super special pie recipe. It's going to be a super flaky pot sucre, the sweet crust, with bananas on the bottom, and then on top of that, some chocolate mixture, almost like a chocolate ganache, and I cannot even think about something better to eat right now. I'm gonna start by my flaky dough, my pot sucre, because it requires some resting time, so we'll have time for that. And I'm also gonna teach you a different technique. It's called creamy pot sucre, because we are gonna cream the butter with the sugar. And it's a different method, but it's gonna be just as flaky as my usual pot sucre. Add your room temperature butter to your mixer. You can also use a whisk if you prefer. And confectionery sugar. Blend this mixture until it doubles its volume and it becomes pale yellow. Then you can add your egg. So I'm gonna add my egg and blend it until it's fully incorporated. Once it's creamy again, you can turn off your mixer, add your cake flour. I use cake flour because it develops less gluten, so my crust is flakier. And then add a little bit of um, baking powder. Now just mix it by hand because if we mix it too much in our mixture, we are gonna develop the gluten of the flour and unfortunately our dough is gonna be really tough after we bake it. So just gently stir it. And now you can add your almond, just ground almonds. So when you bake this crust, the nuts get toasted and then it develops a nice deep nutty flavor and it's a nice kick. You don't have to add almonds. The original pot sucre doesn't contain almonds. You can just substitute for your flour. Wrap your dough in parchment paper or plastic wrap and refrigerate until it hardens. It could take a little while. Now the dough is ready, resting, relaxing the gluten, uh, having a massage maybe, who knows. You know, once we close this door, the apple is like, woohoo! <laughs> Since my dough is almost ready, I can start making my filling. So in my pot, I'm gonna add my heavy cream and then one quarter of vanilla bean that I scraped all the seeds and also the, I'm gonna use the bean as well. If you wanna add extract, you can, but don't do it at this stage. You have to wait until it's not in the stove anymore. As soon as your cream comes to a boil, turn off the heat and put the lid on. We're gonna steep this cream with the vanilla. In a separate bowl, we are gonna make the mixture that's gonna thicken that cream. Separate the yolks and use your whites for meringues and tasteless omelettes. Let's blend shear these yolks with a little bit of granulated sugar. It's gonna protect your yolks from curdling too fast when heated. Whisk it with a lot of energy until it looks pale yellow. Ta-da! Just like this. Bring your cream back to a boil so we can temper the yolks with a little bit of this hot cream. Oh, don't forget your vanilla bean in there. Pour a little bit of your hot cream in your egg yolk mixture so you can temper the egg yolks and it doesn't have like a temperature shock. Pour the mixture back to the pan again and cook it for a couple of minutes at low heat. We are simply making a creme anglaise here. It's like a simple French vanilla sauce, very basic and it can also be the base for ice cream. In less than two minutes, it's thickened, and let's test to see if it's done. So we want a pan, which means you run your finger through and it leaves a clean channel. Let me show you how a real test is made. Now I can call in a pan. So here I have my dark chocolate and milk chocolate. Pour your hot creme and glaze over it and wait a couple of minutes so it can melt completely. This is the perfect way to melt chocolate. It can never get too hot like this. Add some pieces of butter for creaminess and also for the look of it. Let it sit for a couple of minutes and start stirring it. Make sure the chocolate is melted evenly. And if it's not, you can bring it to a double boiler. My pot sucre is ready and super hard. 
but there's no problem because we're gonna beat this with the rolling pin. Papai, spank it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lightly flour your countertop in your dough. Start heating it with some love. The butter gets really hard in the refrigerator, so we need to kind of smooth it out. Then you can start to roll this out. And the creamy uh, method we use is great, but the dough becomes a little bit more sticky, so just be careful. You can always do a French stand dough, you know, just like put pieces together and work it out. This is a nine inch pan, so unroll your dough over your pan and start working on the sides of it and on the bottom of it. Remove the excess on the edges and attention to detail is crucial in this process because you want to make it look very nice and even. Dock it with your fork so you can release the steam during baking process and place this one more time in your refrigerator. The drastic temperature change from cold to hot make your crust even flakier. Whenever the wind wins. Now let's put some weight over the crust to avoid that bump in the oven. I Just put parchment paper over it and any grains you have. I only have rice at this time and it's jasmine rice. Make sure you weight it down and now you can bake it. Once the edges gain a little color, you have to remove the parchment paper with the grains, otherwise your bottom will be raw. Bake it at 350 Fahrenheit for approximately 40 minutes. Olha a banana, olha o bananeiro, olha a banana. Slice your bananas thinner than I'm doing here because I had to re slice everything again. I had to turn one piece into two pieces. Olha a banana. Toss it with some rum and it's gonna add a very deep flavor to your chocolate. The rum enhances the chocolate flavor. It's almost like coffee or vanilla. Mmm, my beautiful golden flaky crust is ready. And this crust actually gains a little bit of more color as you can see here on the edges because it contains almonds and that steak toast pretty fast so it tends to just gain more color. But don't worry, as long as you don't burn it, it's fine. This is the color we want. And halfway through the baking process, I removed my beans or my rice so we can gain some color on the bottom. And then I also removed my ring, so we can also gain some color here on the sides. Mmm, the butter smell of it, it's taking my concentration away. So now we are gonna lay our bananas tossed on rum. So we are gonna lay them on the bottom of our crust. So we blind bake at this, which means we bake this crust without any filling. So now we are gonna pour the filling and then we won't bake it again. So that's called blind baking. You don't have to be blind to make this crust. Evenly distribute your chocolate cream and be careful not to mess up with the sides. Shake it, shake it so it flattens. Beautiful! Well, since I don't like anything simple because I like everything fancy and shiny and marvelous, I'm gonna make a shiny glaze to go on top of my tart. So here I have some bittersweet chocolate. You can just dust cocoa powder on the top of your tart. It's gonna be fine and amazing. But, you know, I like to give an extra just awesomeness look to it, especially because it's Thanksgiving. I need to impress my guests. Add heavy cream to your bittersweet chocolate and microwave it for 30 seconds. Let it sit for a minute and then stir it to make it smooth and beautiful and shiny. This is the same glaze used on my hazelnut and chocolate tart. Add honey, 
The Illuminator. And water, to thin this. Tilt your pan to spread it evenly. Don't use a spoon or the shiny look is gonna get ruined. I don't mind if you're running around giving someone the time. Echo, echo. Uh, I ran out of my microphone's battery, so my voice is gonna be really crappy now. I mean, it's it's already kind of bad. People call it very squirky, and I actually think it's nice because Quirky voice reminds me squirrel, so squirrel voice would be really cute, like a squirrel talking like <laughs> I don't think it's bad, I think it's cool. My banana and chocolate tart is ready, and this glaze on top is super shiny, I can't even see my reflection. When you look at yourself, do you like what you see? You know what I see? A really cute face. If you like what you see, you're the person you should be. Slice it. I feel so nervous because I should be slicing only on Thanksgiving night, but I have to slice it now because I have to show you the result. I got no doubt that you'd be just fine if you were living without me. I just can't let you start it tonight. creamy melted chocolate with heavy cream that looks amazing and hard enough to hold itself not melt you saw I sliced it and it's not like falling apart it's perfect and this shiny glaze gives a very sophisticated look to it plus the bananas what can I say it's just the amazing surprise that I love to put on um, inside my desserts no more chips to play when you come We hope you like it, we hope you make it and when see you next come. week with another delicious recipe of my own. Come home to me <laughs> Baby come home to me It's a half past quarter to three